Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be giving my comments, opinions, and the results of WWE SmackDown Live, 15th of November 2016. It is the 900th episode of SmackDown. We start with a quick highlight package of some of the historic moments that have happened in SmackDown history. Then Shane and Daniel Bryan come out to the stage. Shane marks everyone to the 900th episode of SmackDown. Daniel said, this is a historic night. What better way to celebrate it than with a WWE Hall of Famer hosting a spetting cutting edge edge. I thought we could have gathered that by the name Cutting Edge, but what are you going to do? Let's move straight on. And then Shane says, speaking of returns, after three and a half years, we welcome back The Undertaker. Shane says that they'll start off with the Intercontinental title match. Where to start the show with the Intercontinental title match, but what are you going to do? I just don't get the booking decision in this. Okay, the finish happened. Ziggler rolled up Miz, and then Maurice pushes Miz over, and then he manages to get the roll up and get the three count on Dolph. So Miz wins it back. What? Okay, I get your swerve, because nobody knew that this was going to happen. It wasn't foreseen. We thought Dolph was going to go straight on and beat the Miz. But, okay, it's weird. It really is. Okay, let's move straight on. And then they aired a clip from SmackDown August 2000, which was episode 36 of Steve Austin destroying the DS Express bus. They did like three clips of history throughout the show. And then we see Alexa Bliss showing Daniel Bryan what happened last week and how she should be champion. Daniel said that this is not the time. He said that he saw it all five times and the ref decision stands. Daniel said that she'll get a rematch but needs Alexa to vote on beating Team Raw. Alexa wants to know when she's getting a rematch and then Natalia comes in and starts blowing her whistle and then she quotes Chumba Wumba with the you're knocking me down, but get back up, song. And then Alexa says she can't believe it, and then walks off, and then Natalia asks who Chumba Wumba is. Uh, why is she quoting weird songs? I don't get it. Move on. And then we had match two. We had a debut. Oni Lokan from NXT debuted. And you know what? He got buried instantly. Good job, WWE. This was the perfect time to bring up an NXT star, weren't it? Just to give it a Winter Kalisto with a di salad de soul for the three counts. Bloody hell. Uh, let's move on. Then we have a little backstage thing where the Undertaker's hat is in the back on a surface and then it's taken away by a hand. It looks kind of it looks really, really good. And then we have a SmackDown clip on the main event of the first ever SmackDown where Shawn Michaels super kicked the rock, allowing Triple H to retain the WWF championship. Uh, then we were in the back and the team participants for the tag team match at Survivor Series are in the back. He said he's got everyone in a match tonight. He said that he had the motivation if he could pump them up. Heath brings in King Booker. Booker said that he summoned on heads of their captain to talk about a significance of a Survivor Series game. Tyler Breeze and Frank Vanger owns him as a fashion prince and has a citation for everybody. They show puffy shirts for everyone and Fandango gives it to Booker. Booker says you have to dress like a champ, not some reject from Pirates of the Caribbean. He blows his nose on his on the shirt, asks if you can dig it, sucker and the tag teams chant all hail King Booker. It was nice to see him meaning his King Booker character. I always thought that one was pretty good to be fair. He even got a title round while he was that. Uh, then we had our last clip of the old Smackdown, I think. I didn't see any more after this. It was a clip from John Cena's debut against Kurt Angle. We didn't see the match for obvious copyright reasons, but we saw the, um, Undertaker shake his hand and give him a vote of confidence. I thought it was a nice way to cement John Cena and The Undertaker, maybe that's going to lead to their match. Who knows? Then we had our match three, Nikki Bella versus Carmella. Charlotte was walking in the crowd and gets to a seat during the match. And then Carmella goes to the floor and Nikki sends Carmella into the ringside barrier right in front of Charlotte. Charlotte taunts Nikki and Ninji. Nikki punches Charlotte and the referee calls for the bell. Wait, Nikki punched Charlotte and... Then we get a disqualification. Okay, my head hurts there. Moving on, and then 
Nikki and Charlotte fight in the ring and the, and the rest of the Raw team and Dana Brooke come in and attack Nikki. Carmella takes her time coming into the ring and then she attacks the Raw women. Nia Jax attacks Carmella. The rest of the SmackDown team make their way to the ring but Nia works over all the SmackDown women. Nia goes for a giant running splash on Becky but she moves and then Nia goes straight through the ring side barrier. Naomi does a springboard crossbody onto the Raw women and the SmackDown women celebrate in the ring. Then we see smoke in the back and just a shadow lurking in the background on the wall. It was the Undertaker, but it looked really cool. Then we see Renee Young on the Talking Smack set, and she says she's talking about the fantasy walls that are between Bill Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. And then we have the video package. No need to talk about that. We've all seen it yesterday. And then we have match number four, which is the main event for some reason. Uh, the Ascension, the Spirit Squad, the Rod Villains and the Headbangers versus American Alpha, Hype Bros, the Usos and Brazango with Heath Slater and Rhino at ringside. Gable and Jordan hit the Grand Aptitude for the three count and then all of the Survivor Series team celebrates in the ring. Then it's time for the cutting edge. Ed makes his way out to his old entrance like the whole fireworks behind him and all that kind of stuff it was awesome he's grew a beard out and he has got now got long hair he looks so much better with long hair he didn't look over short hair then he's introduced by tony chimrell who did the rated r superstar i love that uh, and then edge is in the ring says he feels good that he's excited to be here because this is the 900th episode of Smart Dad. he says anyone who knows him knows he bleeds blue he has helped build this show so he has a vested interest in the 5 on 5 match between Raw and Smackdown then all of the Survivor Series team for the Smackdown make their way out with James Aldworth he says that he's been wa- watching Smackdown since the brand split is the land of opportunity there's only one person that has personified the beacon of light on the show and he wants says he wants to shake the man's hand AJ thinks Edge is talking about him but he shakes James Aldworth's hand James says that he has been a fan of Edge his whole life, he'd love to do a 5 second pose and AJ being a dick heel stops it I would have loved to see that uh, he said it was stupid then and it's stupid now AJ says that he's the face that runs his place i just got one little issue here, Shane McMahon is standing in the ring, he is the face that runs the place, why didn't he call him out on that Bloody fiction reality crap. Uh, and they said, nobody cares about Ellsworth, no one cares about you. He tells Edge to ask a question to someone that matters on this team. Edge asks his former tag team partner, Randy Orton, if he is there. He wants to know what is going on. Edge asks Randy if Bray needs to hold a string in the middle of his back. Bray says that the Randy that you know is dead. You'll see a more, far more dangerous viper than before. On Sunday, Edge says that Shane has his work cut on Sunday. Shane says nobody has to get along or like each other. For one night, they have to be on the same page. He said that AJ Styles is the world champion, maybe the face that runs this place. One thing of sure, this is our team. This is our money show. And since you love your little clicks, maybe you'll be competing in the Shane O'Macdown. AJ said that sounds stupid. AJ tells Shane that he'll stick together because of him and because he decided to be the bigger man and coexist. With his hothead Dean Ambrose. He is someone who does not follow the plan. And he punches somebody on Raw. Dean calls AJ a bonehead. And says he is cool. And the gang. He, with the match over on Sunday. He's coming after AJ Styles. At, at TLC. He will use every table, ladder and chair. To win his title back. I just said he agreed to play nice at Survivor Series. But maybe he will. Maybe he won't. The lights go out. And then. The Undertaker has all of his fire. It was amazing. Uh, and then the Undertaker makes his way to the ring. It takes him a few minutes, as we always know it does. And then he comes in and says, Take a... He comes in and then says, There could be no better man than the Commissioner of SmackDown, than the man who has no fear. He said that he's here for two reasons. WrestleMania will no longer define who he is. He said he's back taking souls and digging holes. The Fowler says is where the Undertaker was born and SmackDown has always been his home. That brings him to the second reason he's out here. At this year's Survivor Series, there is no reason to fear failure, but if you fail, you will have a reason to fear the dead man. Team Raw better rest in peace. This was an amazing segment. And the words there, if I can quote him, WrestleMania, you'll no longer find me. 
I am back taking souls and digging the holes. Has he just made a return on a more than a one match a year basis? I want to know. I will let you all know if he has. I'm just so excited for Survivor Series. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you later.